Last week in my research for the Codex Gigas, I discovered the world's most dangerous book, a book that the world will tell you is fiction, but we believe is actually reality. This, of course, is the Necronomicon. And after finding the Necronomicon and doing a deep dive into its origins and its purpose, I realized that if there's one dangerous book, there are probably many. And so going forward, we're going to be looking into some of these books. But to review the next book, we first have to go back and relook at a figure in the Bible, a figure we've been taught was good, but might actually be bad. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you, we truly would not be able to do what we do, especially with all the shadow banning that we have been dealing with. So we appreciate you more than you know. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on Mystery Monday, we're going to be talking about King Solomon. Was he a wise king, or was he a demonic tyrant? Now, before we get into this debate over King Solomon, I want to remind everybody to please, please, please be respectful in the comment section below. I know that by bringing up some um, counter material to maybe show us that we've been duped by some of these biblical characters and whether they were good or not might trigger some people, especially those people who are still heavily indoctrinated by the church. I just want to remind you guys that um, the church is part of this club, this group. Um, and we do know if you've been on this channel for a while, you do know that we have done a deep dive into King James. All of our Bibles today are offshoots of the King James Bible and King James himself was a Satanist. This was no, no secret. I will link that video down in the description box below if you missed that deep dive. So I ask for everybody watching right now, especially if you are heavily indoctrinated, just to listen to the evidence that I have to present before you project any anger or hatred towards anybody else in the comments section. In all honesty, it's not up to me whether King Solomon was real or not, or whether he was good or bad or not. That is between King Solomon and God. What my responsibility is in my own life is to understand and have discernment on information that's given to me, even if that information is coming from a Bible, which is supposed to be a trusted source. I also want to remind you guys that just because I am challenging the Bible and I'm challenging the church does not mean that I am challenging God. I very much have a very, very, very strong relationship with God. I have a very strong relationship with Yahshua and a very strong relationship with Mary Magdalene. My relationship with God has nothing to do with a religious organization. I left the church a very long time ago before this great awakening even started. And in all honesty, I have found more of God's presence through my yoga studies and on my yoga mat than anywhere else in this world. Part of this great awakening is discovering the truth of who God really is and who we are in relationship to God. And we know that the devil is evil. The devil lies a lot. And so I will um, ask you guys just to please keep this into consideration when you're hearing this evidence. Again, you don't have to have an opinion. You don't have to agree with me, but what? But you do have to be respectful um, to other people on this channel. This also starts to make more sense to me because I know in my research, as I've said many times, Yahshua, or the person we know as Jesus, historically was not Jewish. He was from Egypt, and he was raised in the priestess and priesthood of Isis and Osiris, the same as Mary Magdalene. And so a lot of his life has been manipulated by the Old Testament, which is part of the Jewish faith. Doesn't mean that Jewish people are guilty or anything like that. It's just It's just been completely like inverted and completely changed and this propaganda machine has been going on for a very very long time so i just want to put that out there as well the the real messiah the real christ was not even jewish so it makes me feel like 
when they talk about the Messiah? Are they talking about Yahshua? Or are they talking about the Antichrist? So I don't know, but that's, that's a topic for another day. But let's go ahead and get into King Solomon. King Solomon allegedly ruled from 970 to 931 BC. He was the last king of Israel, and he was the son of the very famous King David. Interestingly enough, the name Solomon actually means peace. And maybe peace is what we think Solomon offered his people. And most of us were taught that when King Solomon was king of Israel, he brought peace. He brought prosperity. He was wise. But when I went back and researched his life and his story, I don't really think that's the truth of King Solomon's reign. King Solomon was wealthy because he taxed the shit out of people. And wisdom? We all know the story of the two mothers who were fighting over a child, each, each woman saying that baby was theirs. And so King Solomon decided to square off the dispute by cutting the baby in half. The woman who screamed out and said, no, 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 don't, t- t- don't touch the baby, just give it to the other woman. King Solomon rewarded as being the true mother because her, she didn't want her baby to be hurt. And growing up in vacation Bible school and Sunday school, that story seemed okay. Yeah, that that's reasonable. But looking back at it now, kind of psychopathic to want to cut a child in half. It's it's what now King Solomon is not just known by Christians. King Solomon is obviously also a biblical character that is celebrated by the Jewish people and also by the Freemasons. I shit you not, by the Freemasons, which we're going to get into because it has to do with Solomon's temple. Now, as I said, Solomon is celebrated because he was allegedly given wisdom and wealth by God. However, I believe that he was given wisdom and wealth by Satan. Solomon actually, allegedly, if he's a real person or was a real person, took the throne around the age of 20. At this point, his father, King David, was still alive, but he was very, very sick. And so Solomon was kind of placed there while his father was still alive. But there was some weird kind of shenanigans going on because Solomon technically was not David's oldest son. Now, at this point, these men had many wives, which we're going to get into. Trust me on that. We're going to get into that. And there was some upheaval from some of uh, Solomon's older half-brothers, which apparently was very quickly squashed by his mother, Bathsheba, and one of his advisors. Now, it is said that Solomon was the one that David wanted to appoint as the new king because Solomon, out of all, all of his brothers, was the one who kept continually carried out sacrifices. I shit you not. When you read this, knowing what you know, you read this totally different. Even though I am absolutely 100% against animal sacrifices, I think we were always under the impression that that's what they were doing. But if you read the missing books of the Bible, you see, no, 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 no. They weren't just doing animal sacrifices. They were also doing human ones as well. So let's just look at this again. We've got King David, who's got all these women. Again, we're going to get to that. And he's got all these kids. Now, the story of Bathsheba and David is definitely a big story from David's life in the Bible, who is Solomon's mother. But this is about Solomon, not David. So if you don't know that story, it's in your Bible. It's, there's probably YouTubes on it. Just go listen to it. Very interesting. And now we have this idea that of all of David's sons, Solomon is the only one who is performing sacrifices to the Elohim, which was spoken about in the Necronomicon, the ETs, the old ones that have dominion over the earth, the Elohim. So it makes me question everything about this particular bloodline. Like, for example, is it an actual bloodline that's still one of these families today. So the story goes that once Solomon got on the throne, his wisdom and wealth came from either God or Satan. At this point, it's probably Satan, in my opinion, because he prayed to God to help him with his duty of now ruling Israel. And because of all the sacrifices that Solomon had done, God came down and said that he would give Solomon whatever he wanted. Solomon allegedly asked for wisdom, and therefore, because he asked for wisdom, God gave him wealth and power and 
all sorts of stuff, which we know his wealth came from taxation. Now, this sounds awfully familiar to the Luciferian practices, as um, Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa calls them the Lucys, what the Lucys do, right? You go to one of these islands, one of these campgrounds, and you do a little ritual with the human person, if you know what I'm saying, and all of a sudden you're granted power and riches. And we know that a lot of these people who are given power and riches get those riches through taxation, raising the taxes, taxing the crap out of the people, which is what Solomon did. So in my opinion, Solomon's sounding more like a Mr. B and less like a Mr. T. Now let's talk about the wives. So Solomon apparently had a thousand ladies. Some were his wives while others were his concubines. If that doesn't shout, then I don't know what does. We know that Joshua was very, very much against having multiple wives in the missing books of the Bible. This is not a good thing to have multiple wives at all. It is not integral. It is not a representation of the divine feminine and the divine masculine. According to the Gnostic and missing books of the Bible, it should be one divine feminine and one divine masculine to create that balance. This is why I'm skeptical of a lot of the Old Testament characters, which will be a video for a different day. Now, of course, Solomon, again, is also famous for the temple. He built the first temple. There have been two so far. And apparently, from my research, the Freemasons are looking towards building the third temple of Solomon. According to my research, the Freemasons know that Solomon was a master wizard, a master sorcerer in the dark magics. I mean, you, you literally can't make this shit up. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Now, in this temple, um, which was, is, was modeled very much like a Freemason temple, very similar, we had the Ark of the Covenant where they would do sacrifices to the Elohim in front of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, a lot of Christians um, and Jewish people uh, alike very much um, celebrate the Ark of the Covenant. And it's the great big mystery, right? Like where the hell did this thing go? But here's something that's interesting. The Ten Commandments, which are apparently are in, in the Ark of the Covenant, um, they come from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. They don't come from some mountain with some Moses writing them down. They're directly from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Which was interesting to me because we know that there was a priesthood and a priestesshood of Isis and Osiris, which we're getting into in the Magdalene manuscript. And we know that Joshua, Jesus, and the Magdalene were born into this, this religion, the Isis and Osiris religion. They were never Jewish, never. They were of this priesthood. They never, they never tried to leave the priesthood. This was their religion was this um, Isis and Osiris faith. And so obviously they would have grown up around the Egyptian book of the dead. Is it possible, is it possible that this whole time, all these Egyptian religions that we've been told are bad were actually the good religions? I mean, is it possible? And that all the stuff they stole from the Egyptian faiths and inverted it into this other faith, which is actually satanic. I don't know. It's just interesting to me, especially seeing that they did sacrifices in front of basically plagiarized work. And of course, the fact that Solomon's temples look identical to um, the Freemason temples and the fact that the Freemasons are going to be the ones to allegedly fill the third temple. We also have the very famous Seal of Solomon. Now, the Seal of Solomon is probably more notoriously known at this point as the Star of David. This Seal of Solomon apparently was given to Solomon as a ring. And this ring was given to Solomon in order for him to have mastery over the demons. Now, within the Seal of Solomon is a hexagram. 
The hexagram was stolen from an, a Hindu and Buddhist sign called the Satkona. Now, the Satkona was actually a balance between the divine feminine and the divine masculine, and also all the elements of the earth. This Satkona was believed to connect people to the spirit realm in a very, very positive way. So when we turn it into the hexagram, we're now inverting this to a negative way. Interestingly enough, hexagram is Latin for six. And if you joined us for the Necronomicon video, which I will link in the description box below, we know that Latin is technically the demonic language, whereas Sanskrit is the light language. Well, hexa means six in Latin. Shat means six in Sanskrit. Shatkona, satkona, shatkona. Six. That's the positive language for this hexagram, not the Latin, demented, demonic, inverted language. Now, according to what we know about the Seal of Solomon, is that this ring controls the seven princes, who then control all of the dominion of demons. Apparently, within the lines of the hexagram, demons get trapped. It holds them in there. And so then Solomon can do with these demons as he wished. And it is said that Solomon actually had the demons build the temple. Now, obviously, the hexagram connects to the planet Saturn, which we, we've spoken about the Saturnalian Brotherhood at nauseum on this channel. And I think most of you are aware that the Saturnalian Brotherhood has inverted even Saturn. Saturn is nothing but the master of the matrix or father time. It, it also happens to be the sixth planet. And interestingly enough, there is a hexagram at the top of Saturn. Now within the hexagram lies a cube, a black cube. Again, we've spoken about this at nauseum in other videos about the worship of the black cube of Saturn. This is why we wear black cubed hats when we graduate from university. We're literally being indoctrinated and graduating, and graduating into the cult of Saturn, which makes a whole lot more sense now that we know that our whole university system is nothing but a joke and nothing we learn at university is true. So that makes sense. And we know that judges and priests and people from other religion tend to wear black robes. This again has to go back to the fraternity of Saturn or Satan, the cult of Satan. We also know that this hexagram at the top of Saturn is allegedly a portal. And many people believe that the Seal of Solomon is also a portal. Now, yes, as I've said many times, portals are just doorways. They can be used by the good or the bad. So it doesn't mean that the portal itself is bad. It just depends on who's mastery over it. Now, why would a good, wise king want to control demons? How would a good, wise king be able to keep that control of demons? course, more sacrifices. And as we get further into the story of Solomon, we're going to be looking later on in part two at some works that go deeper into Solomon's sorcery. With that being said, I do understand that when you are raised in a particular religion and you're learning that maybe your religion isn't that great, it can be hard. It can be devastating. And so I, I understand that. But I do encourage each and every person to do his or her own research and to, to, to really try to look outside of the conformity of the church. Because again, the church is a 501c3. It is part of this matrix. It is part of the system. As someone I know said once, people would be shocked to know what kind of ceremonies happen in their churches at night. In my opinion, God doesn't live in the church. Satan does. In my opinion, Christianity ain't nothing but Satanism wrapped up in a nice bow. And so we have to understand that the true teachings of Yahshua, the true teachings of Magdalene, the true teachings of the Christ were something far more powerful, something far more positive, something less, so far less scary than the ones, the condemnation that's been handed to us by the church. When we start to understand that, we gain more of our power, more of our sovereignty, more of our own free will and consent over our own lives. 
So it all becomes a positive thing in this great awakening. All right, you guys, let me know your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. Again, please be nice to each other. Please, please, please be nice to each other. You can debate, but just be respectful. No name calling, no gaslighting. Just be very, very respectful to each other. If anybody does get abusive or starts gaslighting, I will block you because we ain't got time for that. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day. So tomorrow, part four of the Magdalene Manuscript will be uh, released around 10 a.m. on this channel. And I hope you guys all have a very wonderful start of your week. Bye.